that's traveling through here instead of being stiff arm through the zone. Somewhere in those six, we're going to find a successful spot for every hitter, every body type, and every type of strength and bat speed combination. At that particular point, Michael Day was with us for four years, played for four Big Eight champions, four NCAA regionals, four College World Series, played for the Montreal Expos, never thought to be a great prospect. But Michael Day finally got an arm broken in two spots and is back going to school getting his degree. Very bright, going to be a great coach someday. Michael Day found touch number one as a left-handed hitter, found touch number one what he liked. It gave him an opportunity to shorten his stroke. He was very strong in his legs, had big, big legs, and became a hitter, hit 14, 15 home runs as a senior, something we never saw as pure and as fine a young player as he looked like he might be, never looked like he'd have power because he didn't have great hand strength. And yet, even from the basic arc, he moved it back just a little bit, just cradled the bat and just kept it relaxed right in here, almost in a touch number one, and just turned the bat from right there. He became a great hitter. He walked 100 times, scored 100 runs, drove in 80, had one of the most remarkable years hitting in a three hole in front of Pete Incavilla that I had seen. Our clubs have led the nation three years in a row in NCAA Division I in scoring. There's a reason for that. And each of the players that I have dealt with at one time or another have all gone through the touch system. Some days, as many as two or three different touch systems are used for the same hitter. Let's go back and feel it. Robin Ventura today goes back and feels if he has to. Ray Ortiz, freshman, hit 18 home runs last year. He'll go right back to touch four. Jeremy Burnett's a fine freshman out of Conroe, Texas, works out of touch four. Going to be an outstanding hitter. So the touch system is real. And if there are two different elements about Oklahoma State's hitting system that I've not heard repeated elsewhere, and I guess that nobody uses, are the concepts of rhythm adjustment to time the pitch and this touch system. So we'll work off of that, and I'll take you a couple of steps further. And we'll go some questions for you. If you have any at all out there, break in. Feel free to ask questions. We're anxious to answer them. I uh, feel that uh, anything you ask is worth our time. That's what we're here for. We'd be glad to hear from any of those listening stations around the country regarding a question. I'll go a couple of minutes, and we'll talk about a couple of, of other things that are very, very important. We will take the hitters, as we answered an earlier question in the program, we'll get hitters that are heavy in their legs. And uh, Incavilla is big. He weighs 230 pounds. And he's massive. Uh, you get the Jim Rices and the Bob Watsons and the and guys of that nature. They're huge people and very big in their rear ends, and as a result, they're not very quick and flexible. But you get a little skinny guy, you know, like Willie McGee or, or Don Mattingly, and they're very quick in here. They're very quick in their hips. And so we have a hip speed. We have a foot speed. We have a hip speed. And people are slow and quick here. So to learn to use position number two in hitting, I brought the T out so that I can set up on the plate a little bit now, we can take the slow hip guy or anybody that we're trying to improve gear number two and we can open him up. We can open him up to the plate almost as if our bat is at about a 45 degree angle. And so that I'm completely open. Now, notice the position of the back foot. My toe is pointed right down the floor and it's already in a trigger area. We've already triggered the back knee right here. We're already triggering the back knee right here. This is what we call hitting from open. Hitting from open. Well, what it does is allows us to also go to touch. I can hit from open and touch. So I'm hitting in touch number four. I'm hitting from open. When I stride, I'll move right to it. Now notice the back knee position is already turned. I do not have to come up and forcefully turn it. And a lot of people don't learn to do it. So what we're doing in hitting from open is we're pitting you in gear number two, back knee trigger, maybe in a touch system and you're moving to the ball. It's already there. So hitting from open will teach you how to do it, how to feel what gear number two is. And each gear will do some other things a little later in trying to help each gear function, obviously. We build a stride box, which is 36 by 36 inches that is shown on the hitting machine tape, and we put the guy in it. It's two inches high, and as a result, he only has 36 inches to restrict the stride. There are a lot of different commercial gimmicks out there to reduce the stride. Just a basic rope tying the feet together at 36 inches reduces the stride. That's a lot of gear number one. This is gear number two, and it's unique. 
from the standpoint of very few people teaching it and very, very important for you to understand that you've got to get after something to show what that trigger mechanism feels like. Hitting from open is one. Secondly, we can take the feet and we can take the back foot completely off the ground and put it into this position here, on the back toe, on the back toe. Now, we can settle back on it a little bit and what we've done is we've broken this back knee here. We've taken the back knee and it's in a cushion position. It's turned, it's pre-turned out of a standard stance, out of a straightaway stance and it sets a number two. Now I can set right there and second gear is already in the spot. We've got it in a condition to where it's setting right where we want it. All we have to do then is stride move to it. So in both those types of drills I'm trying to teach you the feel of gear number two. We go even further on balance. The great player Setahara O, oh, who hit 868 home runs or something like that for the Tokyo Giants, a remarkable story, hit with his front foot off the ground. He being a left-handed hitter, O oh, hit from a position where he rocked back, lifted his front foot off the ground and sustained a balanced position right here, okay? and he sat here in this balanced position until he got ready to move and then he would cock and go down to a striding action. Sata had a O, the all-time home run hitter in professional baseball, albeit in Japan, stadium's a little smaller, but a national hero. And he learned balance, he studied three years of Aikido. His off-seasons were spent studying the Japanese science of Aikido, that is collecting and centralizing energy. Now obviously if you can set with one foot off the ground for three or four minutes at a time, without losing balance, that you create balance. He did this all winter long and then would move to the pitch and fly at it. He got a lot of snap for a small man, obviously hit for a lot of power and made an awful lot of money. Uh, I think that's a, a situation where we would call that the flamingo drill. So to help feel balance and movement, try hitting off of one foot occasionally. Try that balance type thing. See if it helps you with your striding action whatsoever. So we're at the situation where I promised you to open the phone lines. That's where we are right now. Hopefully we've got a couple of phone calls out there. We'll stop, take a break, and listen to those phone calls and move on to our drill segment. Thanks, Coach. Coach, I think we do have a live call. Hello? Cheryl Peterson. I'm representing St. Petersburg Junior College and a group of coaches here. You mentioned treating a, swi a switch hitter differently. Could you please explain more in depth what you mean? Exactly. The, uh, Onside hitter, which is the gentleman that has to be a right-handed hitter for an example, and he's facing right-handed pitching or left-handed pitching, he's going to face the same type of pitching every day, really has to face pitches coming from two different distinct angles, both from his onside and from his offside. From that standpoint, he has to have better lateral plate coverage, and he has to have much better leg action because of lateral plate coverage. The key to back knee trigger and to power base hitting is the fact that we're covering the lateral strike zone. Up and down we'll adjust to, but we want to cover the lateral strike zone. You can't get me out in, you can't get me out of way. And the more of the lateral strike zone I can cover is fine. And so the legs give you that opportunity. The belly button to the pitch gives you that opportunity. Linear flow gives you that opportunity. But the left-handed or and right-handed hitters, a switch hitter or an offside hitter, let's say you have a left-handed hitter who just plays against right-handers, platoon player. A right-hander just plays against left-handers, a platoon player or a switch hitter. Offside hitters or switch hitters do not have to deal with the angle coming from uh, their onside. They only have to deal with offside angles. So if I'm a left-handed hitter, the right-handed pitcher is over here. The left-handed hitter is looking at the ball coming from the outside in. He only has half the plate to have to deal with. So you teach switch hitters and offside hitters to cover the outside two-thirds of the zone. You teach them to hit the fastball the other way and set their rhythm to the breaking ball. If you're going to put a quality lineup together, you do not want a switch hitter trying to pull the ball. You don't want a platoon player trying to pull the ball. Let him hit the fastball the other way and let him pull the breaking ball. Therein, offside hitters and switch hitters do not need to have near as good lower body action. They don't have to have the back knee trigger. It doesn't have to be as predominant because they're hitting pitches on the outside part of the plate. The belly button doesn't have to turn and be as quick on the inside pitch.